Super Smash Bros. Fighter reveals have always taken the gaming world by storm with all of the crazy announcements that Sakurai and his team have been able to do over all of these years. And with Ultimate's DLC finally concluding with the shocking announcement of my most wanted character, Sora, earlier this week, I thought that for this video, there would be no better time than now to take a bit to reflect and rank all of the amazing character trailers that we've gotten throughout Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So starting off here at number 21, we have Byleth. Do I need to explain anymore? No, but seriously, I just found this kind of boring and it was a really lackluster way of kind of finishing off the first fighter pass. So I just wasn't really into it. And my combined hate for Fire Emblem probably is why Byleth is the bottom of the barrel here. Next up, Krom and Dark Samus. Did I just rank Echo Fighters over a full newcomer trailer? Yep. So Krom finally got his chance and it was a nice callback at the end of that Lucina trailer for Smash 4. And honestly, Krom is probably my favorite Echo Fighter to play period. It's just like a really good kind of mesh of Roy and Ike. And for Dark Samus, it was a bit surprising to see Dark Samus out of all of the assist trophies from Smash 4 turn to playable when I kind of thought there was a lot more better candidates for that slot like Shadow. But nonetheless, it was nice to see. Next up here is Daisy. Now for a while, I was not really that much of a Daisy believer to be in Smash, but after seeing the trailer, I kind of came to a conclusion that it was just nice for Daisy to finally be in Smash and stand next to Peach. Although it's still a tough pill to swallow for me to see that main group of Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Wario, and still not any Waluigi. Speaking of Waluigi, number 18 here is Piranha Plant. Now this reveal was hilarious. I kind of related to the Wii Fit reveal when it was just a total meme character. The fact that Sakurai still put a Mario enemy as a playable fighter in Smash just completely sums up his entire ideology of Smash in itself. But yet a Mario enemy is in over Waluigi. That's crazy. Next up here is Min Min. Now this was a bit underwhelming considering we knew in the direct mini that the first character in the second fighter pass was going to be an ARMS character. I really wish that they didn't announce that because it would have been a really nice surprise seeing an ARMS character playable in Smash. But honestly, this trailer is pretty overlooked due to the next five star studded characters in the fighter pass too. Next up is Terry. Now this one as well was a bit underwhelming for me because the actual trailer itself looked nice, but the fact that Nintendo accidentally leaked that an SNK character was going to be in Smash, a lot of people connected the dots and assumed that it was going to be Terry. So not only was I not familiar with the Fatal Fury series, I also got spoiled for the character itself. So this one I kind of forget about, so that's why it's this low on the list. Next up is Pyra and Mithra. Now I love this trailer because if not for the smash symbol in the intro, you would have just thought that it was some sort of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 trailer. It was extremely faithful to the game and I really liked the twist on how Pyra and Mithra were revealed instead of Rex being a playable character like everyone had speculated for so long. Coming in at number 14, we have Simon and Richter. Once again, this was another trailer unfortunately overshadowed by the fact that Nintendo once again leaked their own character in Smash. If you guys remember, there was a music track uploaded to the Smash Bros YouTube channel called Galaga Medley, which was later renamed to Bloody Tear slash Monster Dance, which is a Castlevania song. So everyone kind of assumed that Simon was going to be a playable character, but the only real shock in this trailer was Richter. Regardless, I love the eerie tone and I like the trailer. It's just unfortunate that I had to get spoiled like this because I think it would have been a way bigger deal if not. Next up is Hero. Now I was completely blown away when Hero jumped in because when I first saw the trailer I kind of thought for some reason that Impa was going to be the character but nonetheless the visuals were amazing and overall it was just really nice to see Dragon Quest representation in Smash. So next up here we have Isabel. Now this trailer was really amazing for a couple reasons. One, we somehow got a second Animal Crossing rep, which by the way was completely out of left field. I did not expect that whatsoever. And we got an announcement for the to be highly successful Animal Crossing New Horizons. So overall great trailer. Coming in at number 11, we have Kazuya. Now this one wasn't super surprising considering that Bandai Namco made Tekken and they also work on Smash Bros. This was highly speculated for a really long time, but I'm glad that a Tekken rep made it in. The trailer itself was just so badass and that iconic shot of Kazuya holding Kirby over a cliff will be something I'll never forget. Cracking into our top 10 here, we have Ken and Incineroar. Now this was the last trailer of the base game, but I love this one because the beauty of it is that they somehow incorporated a Pokemon character and a Street Fighter character into the same trailer, and it actually works surprisingly well. Although the last two picks for Smash Ultimate were unfortunately leaked, this was still an incredible watch nonetheless. 
Next up here, we have Joker. Now, Joker was the first character of the first Fighter Pass and was announced at the Game Awards. Now, I just love this trailer because they made it seem like the Phantom Thieves hacked into the Game Awards and they were talking about Joker and everything. And it was so faithful to Persona 5, although I didn't even know the Persona series existed until this reveal, I found out about this later. Overall, I know this made a lot of fans happy and it was just a great trailer to witness live. Coming in at number 8, the trailer that started all of Ultimate, Inkling. Just so iconic with the burning smash ball and making this look like a Splatoon 3 trailer, they completely threw us a curveball. And just the nostalgia that I have trying to predict all the characters that were shadowed over in this trailer, trying to conveniently pick them out and see is any newcomers, are they just veterans, etc. Just a great time to be a Smash fan. Coming in at number 7, King K. Rule. Now there was thought once upon a time in the Smash community that King K. Rule could never get in because old game, hasn't been in a DK game in forever, forgotten about, and once again Sakurai completely blessed us and finally brought K. Rule into the game after years of requests. Ultimate was purely about fan service and revealing K. Rule was just the start of that revelation. Now coming in at number 6, we have Banjo. Now when I first was watching this trailer, I can't even lie, I just got trolled so hard by the Duck Hunt dog obviously impersonating Banjo and Kazooie's silhouette, but obviously they ended up being in. Now this is hands down one of the most requested characters of all time, even leading all the way back to the Brawl days, and Banjo was my second most requested. Now there was a lot of thought back in the day that because Rare was bought by Microsoft this wasn't possible, but after Phil Spencer showed support on Twitter for Banjo's inclusion into Smash, I figured they would get a dub and surely enough they did, leading us to one of the most iconic reveals of all time. Now starting off our number 5 here, we have Sephiroth. Now there's so many things to say that was amazing about this trailer. The focal point on Cloud vs Sephiroth, the iconic Mario stab meme, one winged angel playing in the background, it was just amazing to see. Now I noticed that Smash Ultimate was taking a conscious effort to put more villains into the game, but this one completely blew me away, like I was not expecting this whatsoever. Next up here is Ridley. Now Sakurai once again got us again and the quote unquote Ridley is too big to be in Smash theory was finally debunked. Finally coming full circle all these years later after so many years of Brawl and Smash 4 speculation and honestly there was not a better way to end Nintendo's E3 2018 presentation. And coming in here at number 3, we have the Everyone Is Here trailer. Now I think I can kind of speak for the community when I can say this just blew everyone away. Seeing all of these characters return such as Snake, Ice Climbers, and some of the melee characters like Young Link, Pichu, was just such an amazing thing to see considering all of the speculation that normally happened at the beginning of every Smash game about which characters were going to be cut on the next roster. This trailer also announced the title Ultimate and started to set up the narrative that Super Smash Bros Ultimate is the fan service game and this will have everyone in. Coming in at number 2 here, we have Steve from Minecraft. This was the first reveal that actually had me shocked in my chair. I was just thinking to myself, what just happened? <laughs> this reveal literally broke the internet. Twitter was down and people were losing it. Minecraft is the highest selling game of all time, so the fact that you can literally see Mario, Sonic, and Steve standing next to each other in the same game is just so insane and just a true testament of what Smash Bros is. And with only one spot left, I bet you guys won't guess what the kid that wanted Sora so badly is going to have at the number one of his list. So coming in here at number one, we have Sora from the Kingdom Hearts series. I mean, I, I can't even believe that I'm saying that. Sora was obviously my most requested character. I mean, I just love the Kingdom Hearts series. And this trailer was just completely perfect. The amount of hype generated when I saw the Mickey symbol on the Keyblade. I mean, if you don't believe me, watch this. I mean, even after that, my mom texted me asking if I was okay. That's how much I was freaking out. So that should give you an idea. But honestly, I'm super happy with how this turned out. Totally not biased. So that's going to be it for the video. Be sure to leave a comment below letting me know, do you agree with my list or did I totally get it all wrong? Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and hit that sub button. And this is PJ from the Switch Stop signing off. Peace.